A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Fan petitions where you come back to now. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to check out my newly founded shop stemmerage.eu. I'm selling DIY products, their handcrafted products, etc. Link in the description. Thank you very much. Definitely make sure to check it out. So last time around we have calculated the cosine of three degrees and we were using some very nice constructions in the calculation of this very value of the cosine. <laughs> Was quite a beast to be honest. Pretty nice video link in the description. And today we're going to take a look at another trigonometry fact slash identity namely the sun squared of 10 degrees yes I'm using degrees here I'm terribly sorry minus the sun squared of 20 degrees minus the sun squared of 40 degrees is supposedly equal identity equal to negative one half and after solving this thing we're going to make use of a basically system of equation that we are going to set up for ourselves we're going to get another identity out on the other side which is pretty exciting if you ask me and we are going to make use of some identities that we have used last time around etc and it's going to be a lot of fun trust me but before we dive into the main video don't forget to check out today's sponsor Wondershare who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel so if you're on the lookout for a pdf editor and pdf viewing software then definitely make sure to check out their newest mac version for pdf element when it comes to the overall functionality of the PDF editing program, PDF Element is my most favorite one out of all of these that you find out there. Been using it for the past two years by now and I don't want to miss it anymore. I don't want to change to another PDF editing program anymore because of these reasons. And since the update to PDF Element 8, it's been even faster and even more functional and now you also get the same experience for your Mac. It offers a brand new UI. It's a way better and more easy user experience. And next to it you can give your eyes some relaxation by using the newest dark mode. Dark mode is always good looking at you Discord. Next to these features they also up the productivity by a huge margin. They up the conversion rate. So the amount of things you can convert into PDFs, be it office documents or pictures, etc. by over 50%, which is pretty amazing. They give you new features that will keep you organized and last but not least, you can way more quickly annotate PDFs now. It's even faster than the versions before. And next to all of these, our Mac version obviously comes with all the functionality included that our Windows PDF Element 8 version has, which is a lot. For example, PDF editing or my most favorite feature out of them all is actually merging PDF files. I always end up with a bunch of separate PDF files that I like to merge together, be it for printing something out of one file or maybe for school stuffs. And yeah, it comes in pretty handy. Put the files into here, click on combine and hence you are done. Pretty easy, but very, very useful. So if this feels like something for you, definitely make sure to check out the link at the top of the description. With it, you can try it out for completely free already, be it the Mac, Linux or Windows version. It's definitely worth it. Using it on a daily basis, haven't used any kind of Adobe Acrobat Reader in years since I'm using PDF Element. Great product, so definitely make sure to check it out. And now we are going to dive into the main video. So as many at the start of the video we are going to set ourselves up a system of equations and it's actually kind of obvious what this system of equations is going to be so at first we are going to say that we don't know what the answer is yet okay we want to show that this difference of sine waves is going to be equal to negative one half so since we don't know what the value of this thing yet is we are going to say that this thing right here is equal to um, yeah since you all hate my capital sigma balls we are going to use sigma okay so this first equation is going to be called sigma capital <laughs> sigma and we are going to set ourselves up another equation which comes in very very naturally namely just the same equation just with cosines plugged in. It does make perfect sense if you think about it. If we were to add those two equations up, we are going to get Papa Pythagoras out on the other side, with, which is already pretty good. And then if we take the difference of this, we need to do some more work, but it's going to turn out quite nicely. So the next equation that we are going to set up is the counterpart just with the cosine. So cosine squared of 10 degrees minus the cosine squared of 20 degrees uh, minus the cosine squared of 40 degrees. 
and we are going to say that this thing is equal to eta because I love eta. And now we are going to add these two boys up at first. Adding these two up is going to result in sigma balls plus eta is equal to. So we get the sine squared plus the cosine squared. Sine squared of 10 degrees um, plus the cosine squared of 10 degrees. Okay, and now next up we are going to get negative the sun squared minus the cosine squared. So negative parentheses sun squared plus the cosine squared. And I'm not going to use the degrees here anymore because you already can see where this is going. Those have the same arguments and hence we can make use of the fundamental theorem of trigonometry aka Papa Pythagoras aka suck my dick. I have no idea. So the next part is going to be negative um, sun squared yet again plus the cosine squared yet again again and all of this is going to result in one. So sine squared plus cosine squared with the same arguments added together is going to be a one. Next up this is going to be also a one. So we get one minus one is zero and once again we are going to get a one. So overall the addition of those two together is going to give us a negative one. This is good. I mean yeah this is nice. We already solved one equation. Now if we were to find out what the difference of these two is for example we could then add up these two equations so the difference of these two and the addition of these two giving us for example two times sigma being equal to some kind of value after adding these two sides together as well and then we could solve for sigma or maybe for eta. I don't care. And that's what we are going to do now. Now we are going to make use of the difference of eta and sigma. And we are going to subtract sigma from eta for the pure reason that we can make use of the double angle formula. So let us take a look at what happens if we take um, eta minus sigma. If we were to take the difference of these two we are going to end up with the cosine squared of 10 degrees minus the sine squared of 10 degrees. Next up we are going to get, and now we need to be careful, I mean we are going to get negative cosine squared plus the sine squared. If we were to drag out a negative one, we are going to get negative the cosine squared um, of 20 degrees um, minus the sine squared of 20 degrees. And last but not least we are going to get the same thing just with 40 degrees in here. Namely the last part is going to be negative the cosine squared of 40 degrees minus the sine squared of 40 degrees. Okay, so far so good. Now we are going to make use of the so-called double angle formula. Maybe you have heard of it before, I'm going to put it here. Namely, what the double angle formula is going to tell us is that if we take the cosine, so cosine double angle formula of 2 times a for example, this is going to result in the cosine squared of a minus the sine squared of a. It's, it's basically uh, just like Papa Pythagoras just with a negative sign in the middle. Now we are going to take a look at what we got. I mean this is the cosine squared of 10 degrees minus the sine squared of 10 degrees. 10 degrees is our a meaning those two in the difference is going to end us up with the cosine of 20 degrees. So meaning on the one hand we are going to get eta minus sigma is going to be equal to the cosine of 20 degrees. Now next part is going to be negative. Now our a is going to be equal to 20 degrees. Doubling it is going to give us 40 degrees minus the cosine of 40 degrees. And last but not least our last a is going to be equal to 40 degrees. Doubling it gives us 80 degrees minus the cosine of 80 degrees. And that's what we got now. This reduced quite nicely. Now what is this going to be equal to? Next we are going to make use of an addition formula that we have used in the last video with the cosine of 3 degrees. Namely we are going to take a look at the cosine of some difference or addition of arguments. Namely just as a little reminder if we have the cosine of plus minus uh, a plus minus b this is going to give us the cosine um, of a times the cosine of b. Next up we are going to get for the positive branch a negative sign and for the negative branch a positive sign so negative plus this is going to turn its relation around um, sine of a and then the sine of b. And now 
we are going to take a look at the cosine of 40 degrees and the cosine of 80 degrees. They actually have something in common. Namely, the cosine of 40 degrees is nothing other than the cosine of 60 minus 20 and the cosine of 80 degrees is the same as the cosine of 60 plus 20. You see, we are going to take a look at on the one hand plus 20 degrees and on the other hand negative 20 degrees. Then we get two equations which if we add those up or plug those in here we are going to cancel stuff out. So at first what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the cosine of 40 degrees. As mentioned a second ago this is the cosine of 60 degrees minus 20 degrees. If we were to plug this into here we are going to get the cosine of and this is 60 degrees times the cosine of 20 degrees and then we are going to take the positive branch okay because here we had the negative and this is going to give us a positive solution here on the right hand side so and not a positive solution but the positive branch on the right hand side let's put it like this giving us the sine of 60 degrees times the sine of 20 degrees and now what about the cosine of um, 80 degrees. Now the cosine of 80 degrees as mentioned before is the cosine of 60 degrees plus 20 degrees. Meaning we are going to take the other branch. This is going to give us the cosine of 60 degrees and then the cosine of 20 degrees and then negative the sine of 60 degrees times the sine of 20 degrees. That's a mouthful but it's going to be worth it. Now imagine we are going to add those two up. I say adding those two up because we can drag out the negative sign to the front. If we were to add those two up, those are going to cancel out in the process. Leaving us overall with eta minus sigma being equal to the cosine of 20 degrees. And then we are going to get negative and now we are going to get two times this quantity, two times the cosine of 60 degrees times the cosine of 20 degrees. Yeah, this is good because now what we can do is we can drag the cosine of 20 degrees to the outside, giving us overall a difference being equal to cosine of 20 degrees times and now we get one minus two times the cosine of 60 degrees. Now, all we need to do to um, get our sense of solution to this difference is to find out what either the cosine of 20 degrees is or what the cosine of 60 degrees is. Let us go for the cosine of 60 degrees. This is something that we have derived in the last video. For this I'm going to show you the construction once again real quick. What we're going to do is we're going to construct ourselves a right triangle here. This right triangle it's going to have 30 degrees up here. Now we got 30, 90, 120, meaning we got 60 degrees down here. Meaning to find out what the cosine of 60 degrees is, we are going to say that this side length down here is going to be called T. And why not also say that this side length for simplification purposes is going to be equal to one. Because we know that the cosine is nothing other than um, it, it adjacent divided by hypotenuse, meaning our adjacent divided by 1 is just going to be the adjacent. Meaning in our case t is equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. Now what we are going to do is we are going to double our triangle up and we are going to glue it to the left hand side. Doubling this up is going to give us, since this is, is an identical triangle to this one, a congruent one, just turned around, this is 60 degrees and doubling up the 30 is going to give us 60 degrees up here too. Now that's a very nice construction because this right here is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangles have the nice property that all inner angles, interior angles are the same as well as the side lengths. And since this right here was an angle bisector, it bisected our angle into two 30 degrees angles. Means that this right here, down here, in an equilateral triangle, since this is also an isosceles triangle, is going to half our side length up. Meaning, this side length is one, this is one, this whole side length is one, but t is only half of one, meaning one half. t is equal to one half, meaning overall that the cosine of 60 degrees is also one half. If we were to plug this into here, we are going to get that this is 1 minus 2 times 1 half, this is 1 minus 1 is going to give us 0. This is nice, meaning overall that eta minus sigma is equal to 0. Now, 
This also means that eta is equal to sigma, meaning those two that we got right here have the very same value. So the addition of the sine squared waves is the same as the addition of these cosine squared waves. But our main goal was to find out what the value of sine squared minus sine squared minus sine squared is. To find this out, we are just going to solve our system of equations, which is going to look like this. Um, this was equal to negative one half for our sigma. And to do this, we are just going to multiply both sides by negative one right here. So this right here is also equal to um, sigma minus eta is equal to zero. Okay, this upper equation. Now we are going to add those two together. Our sigmas are going to, can, uh, our etas are going to cancel out. Here we are going to get two sigma is equal to negative one. Well, and now we can divide both sides by 2 because it's not equal to 0, giving us that sigma is the same as our eta is equal to negative 1 half. And hence we are done. This is how you show, at least that was my method, that the addition of these sine squared waves is the same as the addition of these cosine squared waves is equal to negative 1 half. And this basically concludes today's video and I hope you did enjoy what you have seen here today. A bit cramped the space that we got right here, but I still managed to put everything on here. Um, I'm terribly sorry if you weren't able to read something or maybe something wasn't clear enough. So if you got some more questions, leave them down there in the comments below. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor Wondershare because they are very nice people sponsoring this channel for years on end by now and they are such nice people with a very great program at hand that I'm using for myself each and every day. No day without PDF element from Wondershare. So yeah, definitely make sure to check it out as well as damage.eu and up at the next video I wish you guys a flammable day and please stay safe. Ciao!